Hello, and welcome back to the Prentice Hall Biology Textbook. Today we'll be covering Chapter 18, Classification. 18-1, Finding Order and Diversity. Why classify? So to study the diversity of life, biologists use a classification system to name organisms and group them in a logical manner. So taxonomy is the classification of organisms and assigning each one to a universally accepted name. So to avoid confusion caused by regional names, biologists use a classification system to group organisms in a logical manner and to assign names. Assigning scientific names. So, early attempts at naming organisms. So the first names described the physical characteristics of organisms in great detail. So an example of an oak tree would be oak with deeply divided leaves that have no hairs on their undersides and no teeth around their edges. However, this was not the most efficient way of naming uh, organisms, and we soon switched to a binomial nomenclature. So this is a two-word naming system. And in binomial nomenclature, each species is assigned a two-part scientific name. So the first part is the genus, which is a group of closely related species, and the second part is unique to each species in the genus. And then we, we use Linnaeus's system of classification. So his hierarchical, hierarchical system of classification includes seven levels, and they are from smallest to largest, species, genus, family, order, class, phylum, and kingdom. So kingdom being the largest. So a genus is a, and each level is called a taxon. So the genus is a group of closely related species. We can see the two, the brown bear and the grizzly bear or the black bear, excuse me, and the grizzly bear. And then we have the family, which is a group of uh, genera, which is plural of genius, that may share characteristics. Then order, which is a group of similar families. Then class, which is a group of similar orders. Then phylum, which is a group of closely related classes. And then finally, we have the kingdom, which is the large taxonomic group consisting of closely related phyla. Okay, next, 18-2, modern evolution, evolutionary classification. So we had to decide which similarities are the most important. Is it physical similarities or evolutionary similarities? And we chose evolutionary classification. So Darwin's ideas about descent with modification have given rise to the study of phylogeny, the evolutionary relationship among organisms. And biologists now group organisms into categories that represent lines of evolutionary descent or phylogeny, not just physical similarities. An evolutionary classification is the strategy of grouping organisms together based on their evolutionary history. Here we can see the uh, phylogenetic chart which shows different dinosaurs and how they are related to each other through evolution. So species within a genus are more closely related to one another than to species in another genus. Next we have classification using cladograms. So cladistic an analysis identifies and considers only those characteristics of organisms that uh, carry evolutionary innovations. So the derived characters, characteristics that appear in recent parts of a lineage but not in older members. And derived characters can be used to construct a cladogram, which is a diagram that shows the evolutionary relationship among a group of organisms, such as these dinosaurs over here. And at the top, we can see birds are uh, ancestors of some dinosaurs. Okay, next we have similarities in DNA and RNA. So the genes of many organisms show important similarities at the molecular level. Similarities in DNA can be used to help determine classification and evolutionary relationships. So similar genes. So genes of different uh, diverse organisms, such as human and yeast, even show many different similarities. An example for this is both yeast and humans have a gene that codes for myosin. Next, DNA evidence. So DNA evidence can help show the evolutionary relationships of species and how species have changed over time. The more similar the DNA sequences, the more recently the two uh, organisms shared a common ancestor. Next, we have molecular clocks. So the comparison of DNA can be used to mark the passage of evolutionary time. And molecular clocks use DNA comparisons to estimate the length of time that two species have been evolving independently. So this relies on a repeating process to mark time, mutations. And these mutations accumulate in the DNA of different species at about the same rate. And a comparison of such DNA sequences in two species can reveal how dissimilar the genes are. Okay, 18-3. Kingdoms and domains. So the tree of life. So there are six kingdoms. Eubacteria, Archaebacteria, Protista, Fungi, Plantae, and Animalia. So we use the three domain system. 
and molecular analysis have given rise to a new taxonomic category that is now recognized by many scientists. And the domain is a more inclusive category. So the three domains are the domain eukarya, which is composed of protists, fungi, plants, and animals, the domain bacteria, which corresponds to the king, and then we have the domain archaea, which corresponds to the kingdom archaea bacteria. Okay, the domain bacteria. So these are unicellular and prokaryotic, and they have thick, rigid walls that surround a cell membrane. And these walls contain a substance known as peptidoglycan. And the domain corresponds to the kingdom eubacteria, and it's uh, ecologically very diverse. Next, we have the uh, domain archaea. So, these are also unicellular and prokaryotic, and they live in some of the most extreme environments, such as volcanic hot springs, brine pools, and black organic mud totally devoid of oxygen. So the cell membranes of these contain unusual lipids that are not found in any other organism, and this corresponds to the kingdom uh, Archaeobacteria. Next we have the domain Eukarya. So this consists of all organisms that have a nucleus, and it's organized into four remaining kingdoms, uh, Protista, Plantae, fungi, and animalia. So protista is composed of eukaryotic organisms that cannot be classified as animals, plants, or fungi. Then we have fungi, which are heterotrophs, and they mostly feed on uh, dead or decaying organic matter. Then we have the plantae, which are multicellular organisms that are photosynthetic autotrophs, and they're non-motile, which means they can't move, and their cell walls contain cellulose. Then we have the animalia, and they're multicellular and heterotrophic, and they do not have cell walls. Okay, chapter 18, key concepts. How are living things organized for study? Describe the system for naming species that Linnaeus developed. What are the seven taxonomic categories of Linnaeus's classification system? Rank these taxa in hierarchical order, beginning with the largest level and ending with the smallest. How is information about evolutionary or phylogenetic relationships useful in classification? How are genes used to help scientists classify organisms? What are the six kingdoms of life? What are the three domains of life? All right, that's it for chapter 18.